Alrighty, peeps and peoples, I want to say I love you all very much. Thank you all. The way you all has been treating me, I appreciate it. I've been kind of busy going through life with uh, everybody. We've been on vacation. We went to uh, out west, see the Badlands, all that stuff. Been running all over the place, doing crazy stuff. Life's been nuts lately. So it's been kind of hard keeping the YouTube up and hard keeping the YouTube proper. And you all has been treating me real well. And the comments and stuff like that have been reading them. Even the ones I ain't been getting to, I have read almost all of them. I wanted to thank you all a bunch. I appreciate it. Don't think I don't. All right, let's get into this fidget. <clears throat> this fidget, it's an old one. Uh, it's an old file I was going to put to sleep on my computer. I guess I forgot because it's going to take some editing to turn it into a fidget, and I was just hiding from it, I guess. But the content is great. What we did, it was the uh, 2022 file, Midwest Filers meeting we went to, and we went to uh, two big companies, real nice, good companies. We went to... Uh, Quality Palette and Roy Anderson. Now, both of these uh, companies down in Kentucky were some awesome companies. Met some awesome people. Jim, if you see this, say hi, buddy. Um, but uh, had a fantastic time and learned a lot. Now, let's get into this. I didn't cover things real well. Uh, let's get into this and go into the... Uh, so, here we are going into Quality Palette. And... Uh, let me check and see where's my notes, because this has been months ago now. Um, I put down Quality Palette. Great company, ran well. Uh, huge inventory. That was one thing that caught me odd, is the huge inventory these companies both have. But now, we're a mom-pop operation. These guys are the big dogs. Now, somebody from mom-pop operation is going to look at an inventory of, say, 4 million feet. 5 million feet as a huge inventory or these guys it might not be such a big inventory so the comments that I'm writing in here about huge inventory that maybe that's took out of context uh, they had two nailers uh, automated pa pallet cut up departments stock big sawmill clearman double head rosser debarker which I was real impressed with uh, it'll get to the debarker here in a minute uh, Clearman slope carries very impressive. That was Watch impressive. And uh, this new style of sawing from the end. Um, notice how these guys are sawing from the end. That is really cool. Uh, it gives the operator uh, a better line of sight and uh, he can be a little more efficient than turn his head back and forth like we do on our sawmill here. Uh, and he can keep and he can see a saw wobble better you know he could see any miss sawing a little bit better because he's a better angle to watch his saw blade uh not hurting his neck uh i guess that's it it's just a real neat setup and new style setup and i thought that was impressive it's the first one i ever really got to watch um uh, it had a mcdonough band unit lewis controls cab at the end there we got that air stopping loads Yes, I want to say this air stopping loads. Uh, I hate, uh, in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm not nuts about air, air, air doing large work. But air is good for on-off situations. Hydraulic is uh, more for uh, variable uh, position cylinders. But your air cylinders is click on, click off. But what I really thought was impressive is because we use too much air in our mill because of inefficient stop and load designs. And these guys, if you look, look right here at the way this stop and load is operating. Look how efficient it operates. See how the log drops on there. You can see how they're using gravity to their advantage to where they're not. There's more like a rocking chair than it is a dead lift like a lot of ours are. And I was pretty impressed about their stopping loads. Uh, let me go back in here. Well, let me hit back on that point there a second as I'm looking through here. Now, these stopping loads, uh, my takeaway, which anybody's welcome to add to this, and I encourage anybody to add to this in the comment section or email me and let me know so I, it helps square me away if I'm thinking Wally cocked. But when you use efficiency like these guys did you can drop your air pressure down because air is uh, is uh, compressible 
So if you're using less air pressure, you're moving less air to do the job. So when you get an application where you can drop that PSI down to 60 or something to that nature, you're using up a lot less energy to get the task accomplished. You know, and, and that I think is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm not gonna say, in this application, this is, might be a, a, a longer weight each your words type application is what I'm trying to get at because of the fact that they're using proper physics to load these logs. And I know some of you are probably like, well, why is he dwelling on this? I'm telling you, that's 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 something. That's something big. On top of all the other big things these guys are killing it with. Uh, McDonough. The resaw is a large horizontal unit. That's really neat, I thought. The horizontal, I had that wrote down, and air rod cab, which was... The thing about the air rod cab, I assume I got from the operator. He's a good dude. I don't even know if he knew I was recording him. I might have been doing some underhanded stuff. So if you watch this, Mr. Operator, sir, on the, in the air ride cab, and you don't like me operating or recording it, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, I should have gave you a warning, fair warning, ahead of time. Uh, if you want me to take it off, let me know, and I'll take this cook footage out. But the uh, chipper, the way this mill set up, the chipper is right underneath the air ride cab. So I assume the vibration, noise, banging and clanging and all the stuff from the chipper through the cushion of air is alleviated so the operator ain't going through Hades through vibration through the frame and stuff like that up above the chipper feeding his uh, resaw. And I assume that's part of it, but I'm not sure. That's an assumption. Uh, the grading line. Hang on, decent edger lined up well is what I put down. I don't know what that means, but maybe I got a shot of the edger. Tater, if you got a shot, put it up right now. Um, grading line was compact with smart layout, cart set half outside, which I thought was impressive. If your cart's already half outside, it's easy for the fork truck operator to grab that son of a buck and pull it outside and do its thing. Our carts and our mill sets all the way inside. And I think that is sort of a, um, sort of a uh, negatory. Uh, the only time that it would really show up is in the winter time, is when it's icy. Maybe we'd have an advantage, but I don't know about that because you get you if you can reach right in there, fork truck loader, whatever, what have you, grab that lumber, bunder lumber, and yank it out of the building right quick. Uh, in and through 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 through. Uh, Through odd circumstances that is a big benefit so I seen that as a big to me was a big takeaway uh, takeaways from the company well the takeaways I got they're a little harder on wood than we are which they should be because they are banging the wood through uh, huge inventory was a takeaway I had great workforce I guess I fell in love with the people there uh, and I normally do sawmill people Anybody out there from any walks of life anywhere in the globe that sees this, your sawmill people is going to be good people. I love sawmill people. I love loggers. Uh, but some loggers you do have to kind of watch in the, the, the hiding in the alleys and that type of stuff. <laughs> but for the most part, loggers are good people too. But all your sawmill people are good people. I've, always, I've never met a bad one yet that I didn't like. Uh... Some great workforce, I got that wrote down. And I also wrote down overbuilt designs. To me, that was impressive. What that says to me, some of these overbuilt simple designs that these guys have in this mill at Quality Pout here is uh, because the man or woman, lass or whoever, I assume man because it's things, but uh, whoever's doing the design, I, I, I have the uh, impression that they, they understand quite well what physics do to your fabricated pieces and your moving parts. And to me, if you got a simple application that's doing simple things and you pull out of the boneyard simple parts or from an auction and you can throw that stuff to get, concoct that stuff together into something that does a very good job with some dur extra durability where you're not driving down the road with it like a semi you see, you can throw some weight in there. It's just going to hold your building down. If a tornado comes, it ain't going to hurt the damn thing. You know what I mean? The only thing you got to watch is your rolling mass. You know, sometimes that burns up extra energy, but also it can dissipate energy from these cants and boards banging and stuff. So there is goods from 
heavier rolls or lighter, you know, heavy. It's just a, it's a per application type of mentality is the way I look at it. But anyways, I put that was pretty impressive. I, I wrote it down, I guess, because I thought that was pretty impressive. And also I wrote down productive. This meal, as far as I was concerned, is very productive. So that sums up quality pout. And after quality pout, we all went out to eat. I don't think I covered anything. If I did, Tater posted up now, but I doubt I covered anything of the eating. We all had a great time. I love her people and I like being close to them. Uh, so anyway, that sums up that. After lunch, we went to Roy Anderson's. Uh, I got down that he was a great company. It, it blew me away. I'll tell you, this Roy Anderson really blew me away. They're focused on grade and they don't play around. Um, uh, they got a Ring D Barker with a backup Fulgham Rosser head. Uh, I don't even know if I got the Fulgham Rosser head in there. If I do, show it now, Tater. But uh, huge metal detector, two mils, big slope, corley, large gun, great camp pan. So their camp pan design, I don't know if I have that down anywhere. We have a real problem with our camp pan design back at our operation. We're not utilizing gravity any on our camp pan, and that is a mistake. It's a mistake. And now look at these guys, the way they're camp pan. So you're using your can't so we slide to the bottom. And when they slide to the bottom, they'll sit down there on that bottom, and you can use your cans that you got on the pan for counterweight. It's like an elevator with a preset counterweight on it. Uh, like they're using these mines and stuff, or like at a normal elevator. You're using your counterweight to operate the machine more efficiently, more efficiently, and use up less energy to raise your cans up. And uh, we got a mistake there. It's burning energy. I don't know what it burns annually, but it we do pay for it quite well at our company. And I was pretty impressed at uh, Anderson's camp pan, fellers. I, I, anybody from Anderson watch this, I was pretty daggone impressed, fellers. Um, uh, ring debarker, large gun, great camp pan. Salem Resol ran by my buddy Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, say hi to everybody, or get a hold of me somehow. Somehow, say publicly, say hi to everybody. Everybody, this is Jimmy. He's an awesome, dude. I love the crap out of him, and he's a sharp cookie. Been sawmilling. Let's listen to Jimmy for a little bit. Don't short out. This guy's kind of camera shy in here. <laughs> I, <didn't go. laughs> I told him a while ago, he said, I see you on YouTube. And I said, I bet you see you on YouTube, too. <laughs> I'll make sure Tater gets you on there. <laughs> what an amazing outfit. This whole operation. Now, do you got any history of the operation you can share without distracting you? When I started out, we had circle saws. Okay. Go, you know, gears go. 96, we transported the band mills. The one resawed in 2010 we went to this two resawed. Very moment. 2010 is how long this has been. Yeah. Around. Now you saw it on the old one beforehand. Yeah. Now when did the old one go in? Not, about fall 96. Gotcha. They put the head rig and the, and the resaw in old earth at the same time. Gotcha. So that was it. That was. And you just. Then 2000 they put this head rig in. Then 2010 would put this in there. Gotcha. Now this this head rig would saw on down, or would it yeah, send to the other up. one? No, it saw it. Till 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 this yeah, one went in. Yeah, that lumber went down. See the old lumber sheep there. Yeah. Yes. Then I, that's amazing. I don't know exactly when they put that big sorter and all in. I don't remember the. And year I found out that was JT Shannon's old sorter. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm. The next thing I wrote in was scanning edger. Now there was things about this scanning edger I was very impressed about. Uh, look at the footage I can't see. Um, there was some kind of sprocket feeding system I was pretty impressed with. But it uh, I didn't remember, did I write down who the kind of, I assume it was maybe Lewis uh, that's controlling this thing. I put down less than perfect because it's real hard to make an optimized edger for hardwood. But not bad. Uh, and if that offends anybody from Anderson's there, I'm sorry. I just, there's a couple things I wasn't impressed by, but for the most part, I was impressed. Uh, 
Is it worth spending your money on? If you're moving their footage, I say yes, definitely. Uh, they got, uh, uh, on that resaw system, they got the Kingpin run resaw. I'm sure they had, on that mill, they had the great head sawyer. I'm sure it's a great head sawyer. I'm sure that's the A-team, uh, sort of, not, not to start any trouble amongst you guys there at the mill, but I'm sure that's their kind of their experience. They're gonna throw the money there and they're gonna get it back, they figure, on, you know, from this Canada edge and stuff like that. So I just put down, I don't know what made me think it was not knock your socks off, but I'm sure it was minor. But I did write that down. I didn't write that it knocked my socks off totally. Uh, now on the small mill, mill B, it's got a flat Corley carriage, scanner, shotgun, small resaw. I think McDonough, I'm not sure. Uh, Jimmy, if you do comment on here, straighten us all out on that if I got that wrong. And a smaller edger that's manually ran. So that mill's ran a lot like a common mom and pop mill. Uh, uh, but it's, it's great to have backups. I love this design. Yes, it's a little heavy on equipment costs, but from talking to Jimmy, almost every machine these guys buy, they buy intelligently, thinking about an investment instead of turning cash. So the iron you're looking at sitting in this building for the most part from what I was told was bought proper. Through downturns or something like that was bought proper, installed proper, and now it's being ran proper. So uh, a little extra machinery goes a long way even if you ain't got the people that day to put in the machinery, it's sitting there waiting for the people tomorrow when they show up. Uh, now let's move on to the grading room. Now mill A and mill B is both feeding this grading room. Now that ring debarker is feeding everything, uh, which is pretty impressive. Which that full gym over there in the corner couldn't stand a chance in a million years of feeding everything. But they could probably hold its own on one of the mills, A or B. Uh, throw enough logs in maybe to feed mill A, I assume. I don't know, I'm making an assumption here reading this book. Uh, grading room. Long concentration of scrambled lumber. That I was impressed with. I don't know how many feet they can hold uh, scrambled ready to go uh, for, back, for a, a concentration, but it ain't playing. Holy cow, that was impressive. And I never did look at the drive. I should have looked at the drive on this deck they got pulling that thing. I bet they got a damn drive of on the end of that deck pulling that chain um or they've got it split up in multiple chains down through that area but i doubt it uh they got jt shannon's old ben stackers <laughs> i remember when i first got my cdls going down to shannon's down in louisville and watching that state-of-the-art stacking system down there and just thinking that is amazing like dag dag on nasa put that in there We'll kind of find out. That's where it ended up. It's down there at Roy Anderson's. That was really cool to get to see that old girl running again and looking good doing it. Uh, slope shark fin turning station. Three graders. The slope station. That was impressive, I thought. Three graders. Auto trimmer. Uh, 30 plus bay bin station. Stacking station. Uh, so they can hold over 30 sorts. I don't know how many sorts. And I didn't get... Who's the fella I interviewed down there? Where is his name on here? Uh, Tater, did you drop the ball? Yes, I dropped the ball. I talked to a real good dude. I don't know if his name's in the... Uh, I don't know if I tried to give him his name in the, my whole interview there of him or not, but he was a smart cookie. I liked the crap out of him. Dry kilns and lots of thick stock lumber around. Very mechanical, lots of parts and cops. Lots of uh, cops. As far as we call that... People that keeps the lumber under control and keeps things moving. Uh, my takeaways. Uh, great company. Very mechanical. Good grade emphasis. I thought this company really hit it out of the park when they're protecting their grade, making your upgrades, taking chicken shit and turning it into chicken soup. <laughs> Which they ain't exactly starting with chicken shit. They got pretty good lumber in there. Pretty good logs out there in the log yard. Uh, good, great emphasis, and I had great hedging ability. So with all their air sheds and their uh, dry kilns and their uh, 
warehouse space and stuff like that, they really have a good ability from an outsider, from somebody looking in from the outside. It looked to me like they really have a good ability to hedge their lumber and weather a storm. So that I was pretty impressed with. Uh, on, the, on the stuff with the spread, you know, like your lower grades are gonna be cashing and going, you know, they're gonna take their thumping on them probably. But their upper grades and their thick stock, they, they ain't afraid to set that stuff back, I don't think, and sit there on it when they need to. Uh, okay, I put this down. I assume their cost per foot in machinery was a little high. That's not a fair assumption on my part because they're a dry kiln. When you're a dry kiln, you're adding a whole other process to it that us green mills can't do. So we gotta operate a little cheaper. I don't know if it's necessarily better, but I'm talking cheap, like thinking cheaper. Uh, I think that their cost per foot in machinery is a hair high, but that's not necessarily fair because this mill is cranking out a hundred thousand feet a day. Uh, and that, my friend, is so I think that goes back to another mom and pop mentality, probably uh, taking things out of context type of thing is what I'm doing there. So I'm gonna say shame on me on that one, uh, but I ain't gonna hide it from y'all because that's what I wrote down in my book. So that is uh, what I got of the tours and my thoughts on the tours and all the guys that went with us, thank you so much fellas for coming along and all the guys down there that, uh, that uh, let all of us in y'all's wonderful meals Thank you all so much. We humbly appreciate it. it is, it's, a, it's a service to our industry to help bring some of us uh, smaller companies, kind of help us get ourselves up to power so we can, so we all look good for the industry. You know what I mean? You don't want a bunch of dag daggone thugs in the industry. So seeing you people and the way you people do it really helps all us mom and pop operations kind of give us a little wind in our sails to boost ourselves up and get us a little uh oh uh, number one be a little bit of uh, a little bit of courage to uh, keep pushing ahead number two a little bit of uh, of a road map on what to work on to help us get pushed to the next level through seeing what you all's doing and uh, anybody out there you're never going to learn anything from our mill probably from what you all do because you all's advanced beautifully but if anybody ever wanted to come see our place from that, from you all's companies, from letting us in there, you're more than welcome. We treat you great. If there's anything that you can add to our company or take away from our company, we'd be we'd be happy to get either one. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I hope you all love this video. And don't forget to smile.